straight out the gate. This is our story, we're scripting. Our film, our glorious vision. Our sound, our score that is written. In this sport, this division. My, my, how the tournament's risen. Hey, yo, I'ma lay my tracks down on that freight train. Tearing through the sky in the clouds. Sky high, sky high. Hey, yo, I'ma lay my tracks down on that freight train. It's pre-season, the massive year, 2016 ahead of us. So at the moment we're here on the Gold Coast in Brisbane, just basically pre-season training and, and preparing for the season ahead. Christmas, New Year, we always train through. We never really get a break. I've just come off the back of a big strength block at the Australian Institute of Sport down in Canberra, which is my hometown. It consists of three gym sessions a week. The gym sessions go for about two hours and Really, I've been pushed by my gym trainer, Julian Jones, and he's been maximising every minute that he gets with me whilst I have been home in, in this block that we've been able to get a lot of work done. The Sleeman Supercross track is the only track that we currently have in Australia that's the full UCI BMX Supercross standard. We race on such challenging courses now that we need to make these trips up to the Gold Coast to see my coach and spend time with him, Wade Boots, but just to also have that track time. We're here today at the Brisbane Supercross track, working on a couple of things we need to adjust with Caroline. We're going to do a lot of stuff on the gate start today and refocus on some of the things we've seen in the past, but just uh, confirm in her own mind is what she can do and do it the best way she can. My focuses up here on this camp have really been my gate starts. It's been a strength of mine at times, it's been a weakness of mine at times. It's really the, such a crucial part of BMX racing that if you can get out in front and out of trouble, that's when races are won and lost and there's hundreds of a second that are won and lost on that start ramp. Today we're looking on the gate start with Caroline, really trying to get to the kink as quick as we can and also to the bottom of the ramp. So a lot of time for me is put into, into my gate starts and making sure that they're 100% perfect. They've got the cameras on either side, they've got the cameras behind me, they're constantly analysing sort of my times and what I'm doing and, and helping me break it down. I've been working with a skill acquisition coach through the Australian Institute of Sport as well to really break down the skill within the skill. The ability to be able to break down every single little movement is how you're able to fix it. We'll work on one thing, assess it, view it, look at the time, work on the next and by the end of a session pulling it all together and then delivering those PB gate times. But there's no two nines. No, I'm pretty sure it was three oh. My numbers in the gym are going up, my numbers on the track are going up and now I've gone up a gearing as well, so just overall strength, overall riding ability. I've been working on my jumping a lot. I've been really lucky I haven't been injured for a while and I had quite a solid season throughout 2015. A few little crashes here and there, but, but overall um, I stayed really sort of injury free. Leading into the camp, we had a, a purpose method and outcomes and we keep a clear record of data so we can always record the information that Caroline's doing so we can provide her with objective information to make good decisions when she gets on the gate. Wade's just getting us to, to write down our final goals that, that we want to achieve and we don't have a lot of time till Rio, so making sure that what needs to get done is getting done. With Wade and Eric, who's our sports scientist, they're on, on us every day, making sure that we're accountable for, for what we're doing and, and we're on track. Coming into London, first Olympic Games, everyone around me, all my support network and mentors, they said to me, like, it's hard to prepare for your first Olympic Games. There's going to be a lot of unknowns, a lot of 
situations that you can't prepare for. I realised that on the start gate and David Beckham was looking back at me and the royal family and the crowd. That was so surreal, we don't have that at any other world title event. Every box and goal that I wanted to tick off, I was doing it. It wasn't until I got to that Olympic final, I guess if I was a horse and I had blinkers on, like I really felt like it sort of opened up and I was then, I felt this shift that I was really aware of. I've ticked every box, it's this last final thing that I need to, to do. It was that moment I really realised this is that last step and I think for me that was one thing that overwhelmed me. From there I really felt that it started to unravel and at that high level you can't have any little bit of doubt. I've come off a really relaxing, nice Christmas New Year with my family, my brothers had a new little niece, so for me I like having a lot of that, that downtime and social life and, and life balance between the riding and racing we do and so much travelling. Wade likes to, to keep that balance as well from it not just being train, 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 but getting out on the boat, being able to just clear the air and, and relax. It's very easy to be caught in a bubble of eat, sleep, train. It's been nice sort of being able to have Barry in Australia as well and be a part of our camp and be a part of going out and, and wakeboarding and just doing things that I don't normally do. That was the second time I've gone wakeboarding and for me it's still a challenge and I love being challenged whether it's on the bike or in the water. We went rock climbing with one of my friends, Sasha. I thought being fit and being an athlete that it would be quite easy breezy and I'd get up there. Halfway through I really felt the nerves kick in and the fear. In BMX it happens all the time. I like to visualise fear as being something that I can physically see rather than feel. See it as a bit of a warning light, view it in my head and then I just put it to the side. Just take a moment to be able to realise the signs of it's just natural and those fear responses and see it as that little stop sign, that warning light, put it to the side and just keep cracking on.